Welcome back to the Fast Life Podcast. Thank you for being here again. I hope you enjoy this show, but before we get into it, let's check out these sponsors and then we'll do this. Simpson Motorcycle Helmets has been my helmet of choice for the last four years. I personally dig the Ghost Bandit the most, but really leaning towards rocking the Mod Bandit for the next year of riding. Really not sure yet. We'll see how that goes. If you guys want to head on over to SimpsonMotorcyclehelmets.com, you can check out the models and finishes and visor options and see what fits you the best. And also, don't forget to give my guys a follow on Instagram at Simpson Motorcycle Helmets. Lexan is my go-to for not only my Bluetooth system, the FT4 Pro, on my helmets, but now my wireless charging solution on the road as well with their WPC QI wireless charger. This is a water-resistant wireless charger for the Ram Mount X Grip phone holder. This easy-to-set-up system uses a battery tender-style plug for easy install and will only set you back $64.95 with a two-year unlimited warranty. You can also grab yourself a Lexan WPC and Ram X mount for $110 at lexan-moto.com. And at checkout, drop the Fast Life offer code and save yourself 15% off. And don't forget to give my dudes Lexan a follow on Instagram at Lexan Moto. Check them out. With my recent 131 crate engine install, my Thundermax ECM was able to get me an extra 136 horsepower and 146 foot pounds over the 124 and 131 projected HD numbers with their tuner. The computer is constantly tuning my bike to the elevation and weather conditions as I ride, which gives me the optimal performance all the time. I also run the Thundermax fan for the M8 Touring models. The oil cooler fan was a big help with my 114 and a must with the new 131 motor. Thundermax has your EFI equipped Harley Davidsons covered and you can check out all these products at shoptmax.com and use the offer code FASTLIFE at checkout, which saves you 10% off. And give these dudes a follow on Instagram at ThundermaxEFI. I recently switched all my lighting on my Road Glide to Electric Lighting Co. I'm a huge fan of the looks and the improved visibility I get from the Shark Tooth headlight. And I'm digging the five year warranty on the 15 different LED headlight options for your motorcycle. Their deluxe and premium LED turn signals offers 530 lumens of bright white running light, which are the brightest in the industry and have a lifetime warranty. And last but not least, the LED tail lamps come in a wide range of designs to add that finishing touch and all products are plug and play. NAMS custom cycle products since 1999 have been offering American made wiring products for all things V-Twin and Badlands for over 30 years has been offering the most reliable and dependable lighting modules in the USA, backed by a lifetime warranty. Find out more about these great companies at namscustomcycleproducts.com and you can drop in the FL2020 offer code, which gives you free shipping on all orders over a hundred bucks. Check them out, guys. John Jessup's Team Dream Rides out of Stockton, California is a one-stop shop for you to have your motorcycle customized, maintained, repaired, and upgraded with in-house dyno tuning and parts and accessories. Also, check out teamdreamrides.com online store to see the full array of products for your bike and you as a rider. And if you're short on cash, you can take advantage of the 100 days same as cash financing on all products on teamdreamrides.com. All you need is a job and a bank account. And while you're at it, give John and the team a follow at DreamRidesJohn on Instagram. Paint Huffer Metal Flake has been with our podcast since day one. And I've been using their flakes and pearls in my paint work for over four years now. And you can get started down this custom paint path as well with many must-have items for the custom paint process. Head on over to PaintHuffer.com and you can save yourself some coin by using FastLife21 offer code. And last but not least, you can get some inspiration by checking out all the amazing paintwork created with Paint Huffer products at Paint Huffer Metal Flake on Instagram. Like I said, guys, welcome back to the Fast Life Podcast. We have a good show with Ron Ronster. He is the guy 
who puts on the high voltage show in Milwaukee and the races that goes around that town. He also is the owner of Seven Metal West. It's a custom fender company. And after talking with him, I realized how much he invests his life into this motorcycle culture from the the custom parts side to the events to the races. Like this dude is put he's putting his whole life into that and it's an it's infectious and it's uh, contagious. I think those are the same words, right? Yeah. But man, I, I enjoy talking with guys like this because I can see the passion he has for motorcycles and and trying to get other people to get in, involved as well. And so that's kind of the thing that I'm trying to do here with this podcast and with the things that we do at the Fast Life Garage. So really thankful that he reached out uh, and and made sure it happened. This, this podcast took place at like 8 a.m. And then I had to catch a ferry across Lake Michigan to uh, at, at like 1130. So I didn't have a whole lot of time to speak with him. And I I kind of wish I did now. We'll be back again to talk with uh, Ron for sure. But anyway, let's get into this podcast with Ron Ronster. Hey, guys. You ready to let the dogs out? Fast Life Podcast. I'm up. Yeah, you were telling me yesterday. Are we recording now? Yeah. We are? Yeah. Okay. Um, Ron? Yeah, I'm Ron. <laughs> Ron Brefka uh, from Milwaukee, uh, born and raised in Milwaukee, mm-hmm. lifelong Milwaukee resident, and um, I'm uh, owner of Seven Metal West Custom Hand Form Fenders. So um, we make, uh, you know, for like 15 years now. Um, you like rolling fenders and everything? Like, uh, how do they do that? Uh, hammering them. Hammering them? Hand, hand hammering them. Wow. So. Some people ask me if I have an English wheel. I have an English wheel, but I don't use it anymore. Mm. Um, but uh, I guess our the claim to fame is um, different metals. So mm-hmm. we make you know steel, aluminum, one eighth inch thick aluminum, mm-hmm. uh, copper, brass, stainless, uh, titanium. If you need a titanium fender, I can do that for you. And um, been making fenders for many years for custom bike uh builders um and shipping them around the world that's cool so uh lately on our uh on the seven metal west instagram i've been um posting some of the uh um some of the covers magazine covers over the years so easy bikes bikes with easy rider covers uh most recently cycle source covers Mm -hmm. Uh, about 10 years ago uh, the first issue of Show Class magazine, the first bike had a Seven Metal West fender. I miss that magazine so bad. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, been around a long time, uh, and um, still doing it uh, today. So, uh, what 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 inspired you to want to start, you know, getting involved with the community of motorcycling here, uh, with all the events that you put on? Oh, I've I've been involved uh, in Milwaukee motorcycling my whole life. Uh, mm-hmm. Just behind the scenes, helping with uh, different events, charity yeah. events, um, and I've been on two wheels my whole life. From uh, bicycles, uh, I'd make my own uh, BMX bikes when I was a kid, mm-hmm. you know. And I had the uh, Evil Knievel ramp. I had the record yeah. for jumping garbage cans in my neighborhood when I was a kid. <laughs> Hell yeah! And then went to dirt bikes. Um, after dirt bikes, uh, I saved up. Um, and uh, bought a Sportster. So I went from dirt bikes to a Sportster, so I always had the front wheel up in the air. I was constant, yeah. constantly doing wheelies with that Sportster. And then uh, in the mid 80s, I bought my shovel head here mm-hmm. at House of Harley. For who? Yeah, Damn. and that's been my daily rider ever since. So um, like, <clears throat> you know, for example, the Harley Davidson Museum is a big sponsor of all the high voltage uh, show events. and. Um, I was a founding member of the Harley Davidson Museum and been helping them out with uh, events ever since they opened. Mm, so they're that's always cool. really good to me. But the High Voltage Show um, is, is a grassroots um, motorcycle uh, community, especially Milwaukee supported show, uh, vintage uh, bikes and choppers. And all the proceeds go to cancer research mm-hmm. at the Medical College of Wisconsin here. And um, the reason that uh, is happening is uh, I've been battling pancreatic cancer for five years. Mm. 
and um, something has to be done. Uh, it's a devastating cancer. 98% of people don't make it five years. Mm. Um, I'm in my fifth year. Uh, about uh, seven weeks ago, um, I had uh, liver cancer surgery. It, oh, uh, shit. It um, spread to my liver, but luckily, uh, I think about 90% of liver cancers aren't operable. Uh, mine happened to be. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was very grateful, and it was, um, it was uh, Dr. Doug Evans, who uh, uh, he's the chief of surgery. Mm -hmm. um, he's a renowned cancer surgeon, um, uh, and uh, he's the founder of the We Care Fund for Cancer Research at the Medical College of Wisconsin. So mm -hmm. he took care of me. Uh, they still take care of me. I have a rare form of pancreatic cancer, less than 1% of pancreatic cancers are my form. So I donate uh, my tissue, my blood for research if it can help save lives. So is your your situation a little bit more manageable that can be in, in a cancer situation or what? No, I think I'm just lucky. Lucky? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> this, uh, I think two Saturdays ago, uh, there was a funeral uh for a friend uh, that I went to grade school with. He had pancreatic cancer for less than a year, uh, mm. spread to his liver, and his funeral was two weeks ago. Yeah. I've been around for five years, so I'm, I'm very lucky, and um, I'm trying to do as much as I can to support the Milwaukee motorcycle community, yeah. support cancer research, uh, and support all my friends. Yeah, that stuff is, man, that stuff is just so scary, man. I, I uh, my grandfather, uh, he's the guy that taught me how to paint and wrench and and be the uh, the blue collar worker that I try to be. <laughs> and um, hell, I remember last year. You know, I lost him last year. I remember in January. Sorry to hear that. We were we were loading a, a welding table into the back of his truck to take back to his his uh, shop behind his house, and he was just coughing his ass off. And then he, you know, he went into the you know the, uh, you know he just thought it was like a bronchitis or something. And then they found the spots on the lungs and. Man, it happened fast. Yeah. <clears throat> like, it's so crazy how quickly you see somebody with, um, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's a terrible, devastating disease, and we have to, um, uh, I say high voltage is like um, hope through research. Mm. Um, so I'll put that in a lot of my, uh, a lot of my texts to friends and stuff, yeah. you know, when, they're, when they say they're going to come and support uh, the high voltage show or, or the races. Um, and uh, even Dr. Evans comes out. Um, and cool. I remember at the uh, <clears throat> one of the first high voltage shows, there was a tap on my shoulders, and there was Dr. Evans, the chief of surgery. And I said, <laughs> "We got to get a picture right away." He's like, "Why?" I said, "Because your staff bet me that you would never come to a motorcycle event." And he started laughing so hard. I go, "What's so funny?" He goes. They just said that because they don't know. I used to ride, man. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so That's always cool, man. It's pretty cool. But it's, um, <clears throat> you know, we've we've raised, um, I have to look at the numbers again, but uh, probably close to $15,000 mm -hmm. over the years now. That's good. And high voltage is a free event. The reason I want to do that is, uh, um, you know, cancer is a devastating disease, and I just want people to come and have fun, especially yeah. young people. Um, if they have a young family, um, you know, there's not a lot of spare uh, money to go around. Um, so, you know, just come to the High Voltage Show. Uh, it's free to get in. BYOB, I say it's, uh, you know, bring your own bike, bring your own babe, um, bring your own beer. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so um, it's just it's just about, you know, like, Great bikes, great music, and yeah. uh, good vibes. Those yeah. grassroots style, you know, vintage and chopper shows are always like, you know, we had a, down in Texas where I'm from, we had a giddy up for the longest. And man, when that thing kind of went under, I felt like a piece of me went away. You know what I mean? Because it really opened my eyes to to older motorcycles and the and the culture behind it. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? So, you know, not not everybody that gets into bikes like starts off the super cool path like on a. Uh, you know, vintage choppers or, you know, hand making yep. shit. Like some of us get fuel injected bikes yep. and then start to fall in love with the uh, the heritage of the motorcycles. And that's kind of 
been my path. So. Yeah, you, you learn more and more about mm -hmm. the history of exactly. uh, stuff, and and it's a you know that's a good opportunity. Um, high voltage is a good opportunity to do that. Last year, uh, a friend of mine, Mike Lang, uh, rode his 1911 Harley and <laughs> belt drive a Harley into wow. the show. Um, he had a uh, this year he had his 1946 uh, Harley factory WR racer. He just finished, mm -hmm. um, so. There's plenty of opportunity to see old bikes. Uh, there's plenty of opportunity to see other bikes from around the world. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's a, uh, the British Biker uh, Cooperative. Um, they come with a whole bunch of, you know, Triumphs and Nortons mm -hmm. and stuff. There's a friend of mine brought an Italian bike nobody ever yeah. heard of before. I got a buddy in Dallas that restores those Italian bikes. And just the little, they're so small and so, like, I guess rare. And just the money that goes into those things is fucking mm -hmm. insane. Yeah. You know, repainting original stuff. He's getting three grand for a tank, you know, and it's yeah. a solid color. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just, it's yeah. insane what they what they spend to restore those <clears throat> yeah, Italians. It's kind, of, it's kind of crazy, the prices these days, um, you know, and when I started getting into it, you know, we all we all rode, uh, myself and all my friends, we rode shovel heads, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, that was kind of like, um, well, I'll, I'll tell you, uh, you know, we we all rode shovel heads because that was that was the bike mm -hmm. that was being made at the time, yeah. and there were a lot of used ones around. I was at a I was at a party once, and uh, <clears throat> one guy we were we were talking about our shovel head stories from you know when we were kids and stuff, and and what uh, one guy looks at my buddy and goes, "Man, you ride a shovel head because you can't afford anything," and he just in a microsecond he goes, "I ride a shovel head because that's all there was at the time. Evos weren't even invented and yeah. stuff." So, um, you know, getting into inexpensive stuff is, is cool. Mm -hmm. You know, like uh, I hear stories where these, you know, um, guys, you know, were buying knuckleheads for 500 bucks. Nobody <laughs> wanted them. You don't, you don't want a leaky old cast iron motor yeah. bike, man. Get a pan in or a shovel head. Now they're, you know, huge. Yeah. So I always buy, say. You trade a house for them. I always <laughs> say buy what's, buy what's super cheap right now and nobody wants because in like 20 years it'll be yeah. super expensive. Everybody will want one. And that's, I think I think that's what's going to happen with um, like all these uh, Evolution Sportster choppers. Mm -hmm. I think they're going to be super cool one day. You know, and people are building them because yeah. the Harley uh, Evo Sportster motor is inexpensive and it runs forever. Yeah. Um, but uh, I think in like 20, 30 years, people are going to look back and go, hey, man, those things were pretty freaking cool. And uh, they're going to be highly collectible, I think. That's what I'm predicting. Yeah, it's kind of like when you look at all the different things that, are, that become collectible items, you, you kind of, you know, you, I, I hope that maybe twin cams have that same kind of lineage, maybe in 40, 50 years mm -hmm. from now, you know, because oh, yeah. there's so many of those out there. But yeah. it's kind of weird to, you know, because you look at like the way the car industry went where you know 60s cars were worth so much money and yep. only specific 70s ones and specific 80s ones when I, when I was a kid we would take our paper route money and we'd buy those cars for like 50 bucks mm -hmm. and sometimes we, we didn't have enough money we had to all pitch in in the neighborhood <laughs> and we'd buy one and ride it take exactly. turns riding it around my grandfather me and him went down a c10 truck path for a couple of years together and uh you know, just sitting out there in the garage after we'd go find a little, you know, kind of a shit box. <laughs> and we'd sit back and look after we get it off the trailer. And he'd tell me, like, man, I used to buy and sell these things for 100 bucks and $50. Yeah. And, and yeah. you know, and then my uncle, his sons, would be like, yeah, we used to buy these for $500 back in the 70s and shit. <laughs> and it's like a, yeah. you know, 63, 4, 5, you know. And yeah. it's just crazy. So if you don't have the money now, just get get what you can, and uh, it will become cool. <laughs> yeah, hold on to it <laughs> later. So, no, that's cool, man. So I also noticed that you, you you're like, it's the fifty five year anniversary of, of the, the shovel head. Shovelhead. Yeah. So um, you know the the high voltage show um, uh, this last Saturday was the fifth annual show. Mm -hmm. um, and we do we do ice races. Uh, the AMA asked me to do the um, uh, the Grand National uh, Championship for oval, uh, mm -hmm. which which we did this year, and we're doing next year. They they asked again. Um, last night we had the high voltage dra and uh, MKE street drags drag races on the mm -hmm. straightaway at the Milwaukee Mile, and um, 
I was kind of noticing, you know, I, I, you know, years ago, I, I helped out with like the knucklehead reunion at mm -hmm. the Harley Museum. Yeah. And when they did, um, when they did field games, they started field games there as part of the event. I did the, made the trophies for like the first two years and yeah. stuff. So I noticed there's a knucklehead reunion. Um, somebody had a panhead reunion mm -hmm. uh, a few years ago and uh, nobody was talking about a shovelhead Shovel, reunion yeah. and my shovelhead that's been my daily rider since the 80s i mean mm -hmm. i've got i've got other bikes uh you know um i've got a sportster panhead i got a knucklehead project um i've got a, a british ice racer and on and on uh, 1913 harley twin mm -hmm. um so uh but my shovelhead was always the most fun mm -hmm. Like I said earlier, uh, my friends and I, we, we grew up on shovel heads. You know, we had, we had a blast for years. Nobody was doing a shovel head reunion, so I pitched it to uh, Bill Davidson at the museum. And uh, he's like, Ron, we love that stuff. Yeah. We are in, man. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll send, you know, I'll, I'll set you up with contacts with like Erica um, at the museum, who's the events manager and uh craig and people like that the cool mm -hmm. people at the museum and uh so we're gonna do it um next year mm -hmm. if, uh and high voltage is gonna present it okay. so that's how that's how that started just a, a love of uh shovel heads growing up shovel head yeah nobody else was doing it and um you know i kind Why of not? asked bill davidson would you be interested yeah. so what we'll do is uh we're gonna have um we're gonna have a custom Shovelhead show on the grounds of the museum next year. Uh, the same day, um, you know, we'll have a stock show, so it'll be custom and stock show. Mm -hmm. We'll have field games, so we'll have like shovelhead and chopper field yeah. games, um, and then we'll bug out like four or five o'clock, and then we'll go party uh, at an after party, yeah. which will, which will be uh, pretty crazy. There's plenty of places here to party. I've noticed since yeah. I've been here a couple of days. Yeah. It's so. So that's, you know, uh, and then uh, we're going to have a, um, a pre-party here at the House of Harley okay. uh, the night before. Um, and we'll have an escorted ride from uh, Juno Avenue. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we'll um, have all the shovel heads that are in town and That'd stuff cool. and, uh, and ride over to the museum from, from where it all started. So it's like, a, you know, a homecoming, mm -hmm. you know, so back, I, back where it all began. <laughs> So I'm an 82 baby, and uh, one of my favorite bikes is FXRs. So I wanted to get my, I wanted to do an 82 FXR, like the bike that I want to build it, mm -hmm. like even chop it actually, yeah. and just leave it as the one that I'm going to keep forever because it's that, you know, my yeah. birth year kind of thing. And uh, there's some people out here. I think uh, Al Emerson is probably the the one that sticks out the most. It does like that kind of Midwest D-Rake yeah. style. And I'm just in love with that shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> my my shovel head's an '82. For real, hell yeah. Yeah, it's and, like an uh, FXE or it's a it's an FL. FL. Oh, yeah, dude. and uh, you know, I mean, uh, I, I I ran it without all the you know without without the fairing and the bags and stuff for mm -hmm. most of its life, but um, I do have a sidecar for it. Nice. Uh, I ran a sidecar uh, years ago, and. Um, it's it's been in different configurations over the year, but over the years, but pretty much basically uh, an FL, and I set it up now as a tracker. So I got yeah. tracker bars on it. I raced it in oh, the, I, I ice raced it in the uh, national championship wow. last year. Yeah, the ice racing thing it blows my mind. You know, I'm from Texas. We don't really see the ice we see is like uh, the annoying kind, you know, on the street. Yeah. Um, I've never even I've never been where the lakes freeze over. It's yeah. I've never felt that kind of temperature. It's, uh, you know, pe people from warmer climates are like Ron. You know, I can't I can't walk on ice. I can't ride my car on ice. How the hell are you <laughs> yeah. racing motorcycles on the ice? And what it is, it's uh, it's about six hundred um, sharp screws in each tire, mm -hmm. um, and we run. Uh, you know, it's an AMA race, so. Uh, we run AMA um, screws, which are a little shorter, a little uh, safer, mm -hmm. um, and AMA fenders. But still, those are high-powered, high-horsepower mm -hmm. meat grinders. You get caught yeah, in so that 
it'll grind as, right through as you're your going skin through on the track does it start to kind of chip up the ice some to where it gets yeah. kind of dirt like um it creates uh chips and um during the race we have a rotating brush that goes through and, and brushes oh, okay. that so in between the classes as yeah, you would think if it starts to rut it would ice over and be like hard yeah it's uh it doesn't rut that much though For real? yeah okay. you know and and you know some of the riders would be like oh man there must be three inch ruts out there you know and i'll go and measure them and it's maybe half an inch half or inch, something yeah. but you know but it depends on the conditions yeah if it's warming up um you know during the day or uh as you're racing you know that it might rut up a little more but we try to we try to plow and uh use a rotating brush to keep that uh mm. going but you're you know it's kind of like you're riding on velcro okay um you're sort of on a rail mm -hmm. uh and i mean you can throw big rooster tails of ice chips and stuff but um it's 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 pretty neat uh last year um, we like I said we did the we did the uh, AMA Grand Championship for Oval and we had almost 200 bikes registered. Yeah. So we had kids classes from four, five, and six year olds. You know, and they're not on like little yeah. bony bikes or mini bikes. These are tiny little racers. Uh, we had a women's class, seniors, uh, and we had the high voltage hooligan class, mm -hmm. which. Um, I didn't know this, but that was their first uh, hooligan class in an ice race grand championship. Mm -hmm. And when the number one plate, um, you know, we had over a dozen uh, number one national champion plates, and the hooligan class yeah. said high voltage hooligan on it, man. I had tears in my eyes when I <laughs> opened it up. I didn't know they were going to do that. It was a surprise. And my friend JJ mm -hmm. Flaherty uh, won it. I was kind of bugging him for months i'm like dude man we're doing the grand championship you got to come and win it man you, you yeah. got to come and win it and he did he won it's crazy um he just posted uh yesterday he's like man you know it's getting cold out can't wait for the high voltage um grand championship that's wild and he you know he's like he wants to do a repeat you know it just man like the 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 harley davidson culture up here is uh it's pretty inspiring you know what mm -hmm. i mean you know from guys like you and, and the other folks i've talked to from up here it's just like it really does just seem like it runs in everybody's veins yeah you know it's like well, part of everybody's lineage you know what i mean i was um you know like i said i was born and raised in milwaukee mm -hmm. and uh it's always been a part of milwaukee everybody always had at least one harley in their garage and um you know it's a cool story yeah you know uh the davidsons and uh, you know bill harley they just uh just kids and uh, they didn't they didn't want to be tired bicycling to their favorite fishing hole so they're gonna put this newfangled internal combustion engine on them mm -hmm. you know basically in a bicycle frame yeah that's how they got started and I remember uh, when my dad was alive um, he was in his late 80s and uh, I was talking to Jean Davidson and she's like oh yeah my, my grandfather didn't you know want to start you know didn't plan on starting a huge mm -hmm. world renowned company mm -hmm. uh they just wanted to go fishing and i remember uh i remember going and uh visiting my dad and i'm like i thought i had a scoop yeah. you know i'm like hey i was talking to gene davidson and he just wanted to go fishing he goes well everybody knows that <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah just, um he's from milwaukee and it's just it's just part it's of just the blood known, man yeah. part of the you know part, part, well, part of milwaukee it's really cool to see the pride of, that people have for the city. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, um, not to say that we don't have that in Dallas and other, other areas, but I guess it's, you know, people with motorcycling, they have it here. You know yeah. what I mean? And Yeah. Uh, you know, we've always had, you know, the people that grew up here, you know, we've always had this uh, kind of feeling that it was like the center of motorcycledom here on earth, yeah, yeah. you know. And um, you know, it was just uh, it was just always about bikes, and um, you know, so that's why the high voltage show. Um, I want to do everything I can uh, in and around Milwaukee as much as I can. Mm -hmm. um, I love Milwaukee. You mm -hmm. know, I was born and raised here. It's a great town. They used to call. I don't know if they still do. They used to call it the city of festivals. You know, it's like man, every every church. You know there uh has a festival mm -hmm. you know we have the big summer fest grounds there's just something going on mm -hmm. 
all the time. Is it, There's is a it kind party of a German-based town originally? Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, there was a big uh, German uh, influence, and you can kind of see that in the city hall. If you look at the uh, yeah. city hall, it's a, a, a like a German-based architecture. But um, there's also uh, many other um, ethnicities that, that built Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, uh, the Polish, uh, Germans, Italians, um, you know, and those were like all my friends growing up. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, but there is a, a big German uh, influence. And, um, you know, a lot there were a lot of craftsmen that came from Germany yeah. uh, with their guilds and stuff. So uh, I think like when Harley first started, and many of these uh, companies at, at one time, uh, Milwaukee was considered the machine shop of the world. That's what I grew up with. Yeah. You know, everyone worked at a, at a big manufacturing firm and they were all tool and die makers, machinists, uh, just mechanical people. So um, did you even, think a lot of that fed like the Detroit car building and the other areas like being here on the lake and stuff or? Um, well, it was easy to ship in and out of. Yeah. You can get to the ocean easy, but I don't know. I, I think it was just, um, you know, from, from what I read, it was uh, uh, a lot of it had to do with German craftsmen coming here. Mm. And, uh, and the German, um, like, craftsmen guilds and mm -hmm. things like that. Harley-Davidson, uh, some of their first best machinists were uh, German. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just um, there's a huge bay here. Mm hmm uh so you know in the in the early parts like there's a there's a marine bank here in milwaukee and you think marine bank wouldn't that be on like the east or west coast yeah well there were no railroads everything mm -hmm. came by schooners and uh by ship uh when milwaukee was first developed uh it was um voyagers and huge cargo canoes that first yeah. started you know so i mean there's photos of um uh, the Milwaukee Bay, and it's just filled with cargo yeah. uh, ships and stuff before there were, you know, roads and railroads and stuff yeah. like that. So I think it was just a huge bay, the people that came here, and it was suddenly the machine shop of the world at one time. That's I talked to an old timer one time, and he said, um, you know, in his opinion, uh, some of the quality of the early Harley Davidsons, they were known for their. Um, you know, they're high quality and, uh, you know, like, you know, Walter Davidson won that famous endurance race. Mm -hmm. But he said, go to like, if you go to old bike swap meets and stuff and you look at the gears, mm -hmm. um, look at other manufacturers, there's always like chipped teeth, missing teeth and mm -hmm. stuff. And he goes, look at the Harley gears. They're like never, there's never any missing teeth or anything. And he said yeah. that was the, the, uh, the metallurgy mm -hmm. in Milwaukee and the, uh, the craftsmanship. And made things durable. Yeah, that makes sense with all the uh, all the you know the experience that came through with the German guilds mm -hmm. and things like that. So, and then for my generation, um, we took everything apart. <laughs> you know, all our all our relatives and uncles worked in manufacturing. My grandfather was a machinist, and um, so we took our bicycles apart. We customized them, mm -hmm. made BMX bikes before that was a thing. You know, yeah. and. Uh, <clears throat> and then when we got our bikes, we did the same thing, man. First yeah. thing we had to do was take them apart and start making stuff for them and uh, customizing them right away. Uh, we all did our own maintenance, you know, everything to, um, you know, like uh, cracking the cases open. Yeah. You know, so we, we did everything. You know, we did, you know, all the upper end maintenance, uh, everything, repairs yeah. constantly. Uh, and I think that was from the manufacturing base yeah. here in Milwaukee and just being used. Probably created a lot of uh, very hands-on, um, yep. you know, mechanically exactly. inclined yes. type of people here. Yep, exactly. So. Yeah. So we were always, we were, uh, you know, we always had someone to help us. We yeah. always had a, a machinist or tool and die maker or mm -hmm. somebody that could make stuff for us, uh, mechanics that, you know, could tell us uh how and why to maintain mechanical parts and things so yeah. it just fits in you know yeah the city man the, the, you know it sucks that it's it's kind of you know shut down in a lot of areas right now but man just 
just the time that I have been with the oh, friends. For like the COVID? The COVID yeah, yeah. So stuff. Oh, I've, yeah, I've gotten a few little, you know, driving tours around downtown and, and just the city, just the little neighborhoods surrounding it, man. Like yep. they look fun and rad to live in. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. You know, the uh, my listeners are going to be tired of me saying this, but like just the bars on the corners of oh, the yeah. neighborhoods. Yep. They look There's, like the houses, the other houses yeah. there, you know? There, there used to be... Um, yeah, and there's still there's still some neighborhoods where there's there's a there's a bar in every corner in mm-hmm. the intersection, and that's how uh, when I grew up in Milwaukee, that's how it was. Mm. There were even grocery stores. Like every two blocks, there was a small grocery store. Mm-hmm. But uh, the interesting thing is, uh, you know, I tell people they're like, "No way, man! You got to be exaggerating." But there were intersections where there was um, a bar in each corner, and then halfway down the block, there'd be another bar. You know, it's like how can, you know, how can a community support that much? But it was it was the place to go, uh, go have fun, socialize. Yep, you know, and you have like uh, card tournaments and stuff, mm-hmm. and uh, people had their you know wedding receptions there and their birthday parties and everything. And so I was telling, I was talking to, I think Jeremy from Flat Out Friday, and we were talking about this and. Uh, you know, in Texas, we have lots and lots of bars, but we kind of have them on the outskirts and districts and things like that. So it, it's more of like you're driving to this place, you're doing yeah. this, and it's like, you know, obviously Texas has lots of DWI problems and yeah. things like that versus, you know, having those neighborhood bars. It, it feels like it creates a lot more co- of a communal aspect. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, you got to remember at one time, Milwaukee was like the beer capital of the world. It's not anymore? There were, there were, well, it still is, yeah, there we in go. my opinion. But um, there were, you know, all these breweries like Pabst and Schlitz and Miller and, yeah. uh, you know, on and on. And they had, um, you know, it was, uh, you know, there's there's stories about uh, Harley Davidson early employees, you know, and they would they would just go right over to Miller mm-hmm. and um, you know get their beer for their lunch and stuff, you know. <laughs> so they were drinking beer at lunch, and that I think that was from you know hundreds of years ago when you brewed beer, you brewed it to um, like sanitize uh, the yeah. water. The water wasn't safe, so when you brewed beer, so everybody was drinking beer because it yeah. was safe to drink. And then, you know, with all the European, like the German, Polish, all these uh, European immigrants. Yeah. Well, they're all drinking beer, man. Yeah. So uh, it was all about, there were beer gardens all over the place. That kind of went away when I was a kid. I mean, we when we went and drank beer in the parks, we got chased by the cops and stuff, yeah. you know. But now, um, if it wasn't for this COVID um uh, uh, shut down and, and all the precautions and everything they're opening up in the Milwaukee County parks they're opening up beer gardens again That's everywhere cool. so um, so it's like bars are, are having uh, you know beer gardens the parks are opening up they even have a traveling uh, like beer garden that goes from park to park um, so you know it's cool again. Yeah. You know, they're getting back to their roots how I feel it like, was. I feel like a beer, ago. you know, just having beer with people, it, it, it means a lot to me. Like, there's times where I, I'm like, I need to quit fucking drinking. But it's the best thing to celebrate a hard day, celebrate a, a shitty day, <laughs> celebrate anything. You know, like me and my buddies ride across country. We get to a destination, like, get a 12-pack. We're, we're, we're cracking them open in the, in the hotel parking lot or the yeah. campsite. And, uh, you know, it's moderation maybe would help but yeah. you know it's just fun man it feels good to us to just yep. take the edge off more or less and, yep. and be able to you know so i do a I do a shovel heads run poker run every year started mm-hmm. that in 2008 and um you know the stops are bars you know and usually like cool biker friendly bars but it doesn't have to be a biker bar it could be someplace really cool um and you know, it's an old school poker run, but the reason it stops at bars is that's what that's what we used to do when we were younger. We we yeah. we we had we rode our shovel heads from bar to bar. Yeah, that still happens for the parties, yeah. the bands. Uh, we'd be on like a dart team or a pool team, and you know, it's usually a traveling league, so it's mm-hmm. a different bar every you know every yeah. week, and we'd just ride our shovel heads mm-hmm. there, and um, it got. It got to the point where uh, 
I'd have a conversation with my friends like, oh, we're going over by this, you know, this dude's house or, or we got to go to this store. And it's like, oh, where, where is that again? I can't picture that. Oh, yeah, it's over by Frank's yeah. Tavern or, it's, you know, it's over by Ash's Tavern yeah. or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I know where that. Oh, I know where that is. So yeah, everything exactly. was in relation to, you know, a tavern. That's cool. Um, yeah, so it was. And we'd laugh, you know, we'd like, Jesus Christ, man, our our freaking directions are like, you know, bar related, <laughs> man. Like, yeah, I'm getting thirsty. Let's go to the bar now. Yeah, it's. I mean, like in Dallas, we have a. You know, like I said, we have districts that are kind of more, you know, a row of bars, and then, you know, um, so, and with the with all the shit that's going on, it's like, if they didn't serve food, then they kind of got shut down. So we've all been forced to kind of go to like restaurant bars, like, you know, Buffalo Wild Wings and Chili's and shit, which is. Yeah. Which is cool, but man, there's just something about that old, like an yeah. old bar that's been there for years. I could, I could take you to some really cool bars mm-hmm. uh, in Milwaukee. You know, when you come back, uh, yeah, when the I, COVID stuff is over, and we'll we'll go ride, and man, I'll take you to some really yeah. cool old places. I man. think for old sure, you know, it, it gets real tough to uh, to come here. You know, because Sturgis is a big part of our business as, as far as being there to promote and do things. And then, you know, with the anniversary of the Milwaukee rally being so close to that, it's hard to be gone for two weeks to Sturgis, come back to work, make enough money to be able to go back on the road for at least another week or so. Yeah. But fortunately from Dallas, this is only like 1,100 miles for us. So it's not too bad. Mm-hmm. Um, but I definitely want to come back for the, the – hopefully Mama Tried takes place. I'd love to check that out because mm-hmm. I love wintertime shows because, yeah. you know, it's just come, like a – yeah, come back for um, you could come back for the ice races. Yeah, the high voltage ice races mm-hmm. uh, or the shovelhead reunion. We're gonna do that in June next year, and uh, but uh, that might be a good one because I think yeah. in June, me and my buddies haven't talked about what our big trip's gonna be. But now that I've kind of come up here for yeah. the first time, it's kind of like one of those things that I want all my other buddies to experience this now. Yeah. You know. And the reason uh, high voltage is in the summer and the shovelheads run is in the summer because motorcycles are about riding yeah exactly you know i mean it's cool to build them and show them off but uh you yeah. know the real enjoyment and the 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 real authentic purpose was to ride them and enjoy them 100 percent. what i've been preaching since day one and i think that when you when you're a biker in whatever area you're from florida whatever whatever type of bike you are mm-hmm. you kind of got to get you have to be around real enthusiasts to get that bug of like the love for the bike and not the love for the attention from the bike. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, like I said, being up here with this this city being so ingrained yeah. into Harley Davidson, it's contagious. You know yeah. what I mean? I um, I felt this way uh, ever since I was a kid, um, and uh, the only place I can really relax is on a bike yeah. and riding it. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it's like, you know. Obviously, you know, uh, we all have challenges, stress, and everything. But that all just that all just falls away when I'm on the bike and riding. Yeah, so, it does. so that's why you know the the high voltage show is a ride in bike show. Um, you know, the shovelhead reunion uh, will you know be in June, so you can ride your bike from mm-hmm. wherever you are in the country. You can ride your shovelhead to the shovelhead reunion. Yeah, the shovelheads run. Well, it's a poker run, that's so cool. you can ride with your friends yeah and everything uh the high voltage ice races you know stud up that sportster well i studded up my shovel head and and raced it so shovel head you know uh, yeah. stud up your bike race in the winter and that really uh cuts down like the the winter blues and stuff it's like yeah. oh i can't i can't get on my bike i can't ride it's you know icy out Get a dirt bike and stud it up. Stud up your Sportster. Stud up your shovel head and come out to the high voltage ice races and race, yeah. man. And it really, it really helps, man. And you got to get out and practice, you know. So, yeah. so that's just one weekend in the winter. But you got to be out on the ice practicing and stuff. That's yeah. a freaking blast, it you is. know. So you're you're riding. So it's all about riding and enjoying the ride. And like I said, man, um, I can be. Um, going through the worst stuff in my life and I get on a bike and ride so it's like um, I just had that liver cancer surgery Mm -hmm. you know weeks ago Um, I had it on Wednesday I was released on 
Monday, the next Monday, and I just threw my clothes in the house. I got on my shovel head and went for a, went for a ride, you know. Yeah. Uh, don't tell my surgeon that. Yeah. But uh, and then three weeks uh, after the surgery, um, headed out to Sturgis. Nice. I went riding around. You know, that's my Milwaukee's my number one favorite place in the world. Sturgis uh, uh, and the Black Hills. Um, specifically the Black Hills of South Dakota is my second. So yeah. we just rode out there. We rode the hills, you know, the beautiful uh, hills and mm -hmm. highways out there uh, all day. And then we went back to uh, my friend Cabana Dan. Uh, he's a um, uh, he's a really good custom bike builder. Um, and him and his wife Leah have a place out there. And we just, uh, we'd ride all mm -hmm. day and then we'd hang out uh in the garage all night and just laugh for hours yeah. so we rode for hours each day and at night we just sat around and laughed do for you usually hours. uh do it like do you have like a a secret path to make it happen or uh, like a secret see me when i go i like to try to go a couple days before the official rally starts yeah. to get a little bit of the riding in yeah. and then enjoy some of the partying with the rally yeah we do it all different i used to go uh um I, I used to go there before uh, the rally, and um, I stayed at a girlfriend's uh, father's uh, house um, out there. And um, uh, yeah, we, we would go out. We would even go out there uh, when the rally wasn't going on, but like the most fun, I think, was uh, just cruising around in the hills uh, right before the, ra you know, the rally started, and then yeah. You start seeing like a couple bikes, mm -hmm. and then you see a few more bikes, um, and then you have to you know go to the opening of the dungeon bar, uh, and yeah. then all of a sudden, pow! There's like no more cars on the road. It's just all bikes, yeah. you know. And uh, so I've also you know, stayed on the back end of it where it's like it was co covered in bikes, and as the second week kind of starts to you know wind down, or actually. To me, I feel like it's a, as you get to the end of the first week, the cars start to come back and some of the people leave. Because so I feel like a lot of people only show up for like five, six days mm. of it. It's kind of like Vegas sometimes, you know. Because yeah. we mm. went this year and we did uh, we did like five days in Sturgis and then we went and did Yellowstone afterwards. We drank every single night for two weeks straight. <laughs> I come home, I'm like 15 pounds heavier than I was when I left. <laughs> I feel sluggish and like yeah. ugh, it's just... We, we I loved to, it though. We used to do that. Um, we we'd ride out there and we would just party to yeah. bar close. And then after that, you know, and then we'd be on our on our ride out there. We'd be stopping at campgrounds and it's just filled with bikes. Yeah. And then we'd get up, you know, we'd get up really early, right at the crack of noon, and all the bikes are gone, but ours, you know. Yeah. And then we're like riding hungover. You know, it was uh, it was part of the whole thing, but partying all night long. Yeah. Um, you know, it was like riding out there was half the fun maybe that's, even more it is, half the yeah, fun. yeah dude that's exactly it that's what i try to tell everyone that the uh the way you get there is kind of even if it's a shitty trip there once you get there yeah. man i made it fucking give me a beer yeah. or man that was fucking awesome we got here no problems everybody was on let's have a beer you know what i mean like yep. the journey there is really the, the first uh, time i went out to sturgis i went out with a bunch of friends and it rained uh, yeah. both days and um when I see them now, yeah, uh, we just talk about what good times we had and how this was funny and and you know how mm -hmm. much fun we had. And I go, do you remember it rained, but you know, for two days on a ride out there? And they're like, oh yeah, that's right. I completely forgot about that. Yeah, you know. So when you're with friends, you're having a good time. Uh, that's what's most important, and that's what you remember years later mm -hmm. is the good times. So uh, yeah, we had we had really uh, a lot of good times out there, and you know, riding around Wisconsin too. There's a lot of a lot of great places to ride in Wisconsin, mm -hmm. in the area. There's uh, a lot of different terrain and everything. So um, you know, like pretty awesome. I get that conversation a lot. We live in I live in Dallas, and there's really no curves anywhere. But I think that every area has like some kind of gem of a ride. I've I've. I've been going through Kansas in a cornfield before, and shit just felt badass. Yeah. You know, uh, it's probably not the most ideal place I want to go ride all the time, mm -hmm. but to me, I just feel like, man, like I could be, I could be pissed off right now, but I could also be at work right now. <laughs> you know, so I'm sitting yeah. here riding this bike through these towns that I've never Bad. seen. Yeah, 
a bad day of riding is still better than a good day at work. Yeah. <laughs> so, exactly. And uh, like with the shovel heads run, poker run, man, I'll take these guys in some scenic uh, roads and some hills even nearby that nobody mm-hmm. knew about, you know. And uh, uh, a couple of years ago on the shovel heads run, uh, we had some hills and some uh, twisties and stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, one guy that lived in that area is like, dude, how did you find this road, man? I didn't even know. I live here, and I didn't even know this was wow. here. And I'm like, well, I've been around a long time, man. Yeah. And, um, uh, but it's, you know, it's all about the ride, man. Yeah. And uh, having fun with friends and everything. So this year's, uh, you know, like you said, we just, I just missed the uh, the high voltage show for this year. How was the yeah, turnout 50. like, man? How was the, uh, oh, you was, had some bands and all that shit? Um, we, because uh, of the COVID, the, the bands, um, they were all stoked, you know, like a, a few weeks before. They're like, yeah, we're coming. And then they slowly, started to back out they're like oh. we got oh we got one you know one uh one band member that isn't really all that comfortable and i'm like hey man you know i i want you to i want there to be good vibes mm-hmm. and if if they don't feel safe don't worry about it, man just come and party so what we did is uh, a friend of mine um uh, uh jonah holter uh his uh he's a dj on on instagram he's spun back uh, he brought his sound equipment, uh, and then a friend of mine, Ace, um, uh, he was most uh, recently the manager at the Fuel uh, Fuel on 5th, Fuel mm-hmm. Cafe. Um, he downloaded, uh, like, I don't know, 10 hours of uh, songs, man, and it was, it was cool. Yeah. Brian Smith from the band God's Outlaw came and opened the show with mm-hmm. an acoustic. Uh, he brought his guitar, um, did an acoustic set. Uh, so it was really, really cool. Uh, yeah. Brian's a good, um, a good friend, a uh, great artist. He does like, uh, outlaw country, uh, music and, uh, he's been coming kind of like the, uh, the opener, you know, it's like mm-hmm. the show, but it was a great turnout. Um, it was, uh, there was a, like a lot of, um, rain, uh, the day before. So I, I didn't think there'd be that much of a turnout, Yeah. but I have to do the show. Um, and we did it at the Seven Metal West um, slash V Metals uh, shop. Mm-hmm. So uh, there's building one and building two. Uh, plenty of grass. Some people camped out and everything. But it was uh, it was like drizzling in the morning, and then uh, you know it turned out kind of. I couldn't believe the turnout. Yeah. I didn't think there would be that many people, but it was packed. There yeah. were a lot of bikes. Um, it was on private property this year, so we didn't we didn't have to worry about anything. So there were a lot of burnouts. I even had a burnout contest. Yeah. So I gave out awards, you know, like best burnout, and then best of the best um, burnout went to Mike from the Tramps. Uh, he burned his tire right off, man. Nice. And uh, so it was it was really uh, you know I got to say like touching that all these friends came to support mm-hmm. it and everything and. Um, uh, it, it it was surprising. I couldn't believe how yeah. many people came and then stayed. I feel like right now everybody, especially bikers, man, they're just looking for that connection. You know what I mean? With everything being closed and not being yeah. able to socialize, which, you know, for the most part, I think a lot of us bikers are kind of social creatures. Yeah. You know, so it's like when they have an event that doesn't cancel, you know, yeah. and I know a lot of them cancel not because they wanted to, but because they couldn't get the permits from the cities yep. and things like yeah. that. So I, I, uh, you know, um, high voltage, um, the last two years was in uh, one of the uh, Milwaukee County parks. Mm-hmm. And Milwaukee, uh, Milwaukee was kind of putting the heat on Milwaukee County parks on big events and everything. Yeah. So they're like, well, we're not really gonna do anything till October. Um, so I had to find another spot and um, uh, doing it at the shop uh, for some reason mm-hmm. never occurred to me before. And uh, my friend Mark's like, well, why don't you just do it here? <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you got the land, dude, that's the spot. Yeah. yeah. You know? Oh, plenty plenty of room for camping, plenty of room for bikes. I mean, there's uh, there's three big parking lots. Uh, so we had, you know, we, we have enough, enough room for, you know, 100 or more show bikes mm-hmm. and uh, 
bike parking for all the people that just ride in uh, across the street in the industrial park. Um, all the other businesses opened up their parking lots for cars and stuff. That's cool. So, um, is it kind of a rule, a little bit, or more like a warehouse district, or what? Uh, it's just a small industrial park right okay. near here, That's actually. Cool. And uh, uh, it's just a little industrial loop, and it's kind mm -hmm. of tucked in out of the way. The corner where where our um, where the buildings are is is kind of in the corner next to a park, mm -hmm. so we can point the sound right at a. Uh, right at a big park, so there's not any neighbors to complain sure. or anything. Yeah. So yeah, we had the we had the music cranked up pretty loud and uh, we're doing yeah. burnouts like crazy. It was awesome, and so I usually have nobody to nobody in to the complain. winter time in Dallas. I usually have a New Year's kind of party that's kind of like it's kind of like our our anniversary for the shop and my podcast, right? And um, I last winter I, I did this complete renovation. You know, I have a paint booth, and then on top of it, I built a studio for the podcast and like a loft where I do all my artwork and airbrush and stuff. Yeah, cool. and had this huge party, dude. So many people came. But you've heard of the, like the IMS shows, like the yeah. International Motorcycle Shows. Mm -hmm. So every year around New Year's, they come to Dallas. Well, they're not happening this year. And since I've been having more parties at my shop, I'm in an industrial complex as well, uh, but right across the parking lot from me is just one house that won't sell for you know he's like still stuck oh, in an industrial yeah. area and he complains and <laughs> you know everybody's trying to do burnouts all the time and it's like it's not even that we're being loud it's just that like if you're if it's 11 o'clock at night and it's super quiet everywhere and two people are talking that shit goes yeah. it carries oh yeah far and then you can hear a screen door open and close yeah you know half a mile away when it's you know there's it's quiet it's quiet yeah so so we're kind of in a in a weird spot where we're trying to figure out how to continue to do this party because it's been growing you're gonna have to buy that guy's house yeah <laughs> i definitely want to do that but we're gonna try to figure something out because you know ims isn't taking place this year so we just piggybacked off of it because some people would have a reason to come to dallas mm -hmm. other than just to come to the thing for us like they'd be like oh i want to see the new bikes or see some vendors or i'm yeah. a vendor going to this thing so we're kind of on the fence of feeling like we might just have to do like a small winter show. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, it'll turn out. Yeah. Uh, yeah, with uh, high voltage, we we started out, and I can tell you exactly how it started out. I had just had, um, I had just gone through the chemo, radiation, and pancreatic cancer uh, mm -hmm. surgery where they removed most of my pancreas and, and a bunch of other internal organs uh, to save my life. And... Uh, uh, a friend of mine had a, um, a bike night at uh, Frank's Power Plant in, in, Bay, in the Bayview uh, area of Milwaukee here. And I got there early. I was standing on the corner, and the alderman came wa was walking down the street. And he crossed the street, and he's walking right towards me. And I'm like, oh, man, people must have been complaining about the noise of the bikes or something. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, Tony, what's going on? He's like, oh, hey, Ron, I'm just here to, to meet with Frank about a possible beer garden. And Frank, you got to understand, Frank owned uh, Frank's power plant, and you got to understand that you know I was I was born and raised in Milwaukee, mm -hmm. so every, everything's related. Yeah. There's all these friends. So Frank went to high school with Mark, who runs V Metals. Okay. So uh, my um, that's where we had the show this year at the yeah. Seven Metal Shop and the V Metals Shop. So. When uh, Tony, the alderman, is like, oh, I'm here to meet with Frank. Well, well, Frank works for a mining company, and he actually lives in Asia now. Mm. So he's he, you only see him, like, maybe at Christmas time, every other Christmas or something. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, Frank, I look over my shoulder, and Frank's standing there. I go, Frank, what's going on? He's like, oh, hey, Ron, I'm just here to meet with Tony about a beer garden. And then it popped into my head. I got both guys. Yeah. Yeah. Um, here that would you know that you know i help. need i need in on this i'm like wow i go hey would you guys support a um a motorcycle show right here in the street in front of frank's to benefit cancer research and they're both like oh yeah man we're in mm -hmm. absolutely and you know the uh, tony the alderman's like yeah i'll i'll 
you know, I'll sign the permits and everything. I'll prove everything. And Frank's like, I would love that. Yeah. Because Frank's got his, he's got his like chopper hanging from the ceiling in the bar and stuff like yeah. that. So that's how that started. It just popped into my head when both of those guys were there. And what are the chances of the alderman walking up and Frank being there? And he lives in Asia at the same time. Yeah. So um, that's how that started in the first, for the first two years. We did it right on the street. And by the second year, there was no room. We had over 100 show bikes. Damn. And um, we're kind of like standing there going, wow, man, we get a few more bikes. We got no place to put them. Mm -hmm. So then Humble Park was part of the Milwaukee County Park System, and um, they had already let me do the ice races. 2018, they let me do uh, the first ice races at Wilson Park mm -hmm. in Milwaukee. Now, Wilson Park, that was my park growing up. That's yeah. where we went swimming. We went fishing. We played softball. Uh, when I decorated my bicycle for the 4th of July parade, it ended up at Wilson Park, and you got your little... Um, cup of ice cream with your wooden spoon and stuff, yeah, you know, yeah. and you sat there and waited for the fireworks. Uh, back in the 1980s, they did ice racing there. Mm. So um, a friend of mine, um, he's like, hey, uh, how come they don't do ice racing at Wilson Park anymore? And I'm like, wow, I don't know. Let me look into that. <laughs> and then I went to the parks uh system and uh i asked them about it and they're like well, well we'll have a meeting you know put a proposal in so i had to go to the parks administration building and it's this huge cream city brick building mm -hmm. go into this giant conference room sitting there alone all these parks administrators pile in like 20 of them right and i'm like oh man <laughs> this is not gonna go good you know yeah and then um a woman, I can't think of her name right now, she's the last one to come in. And she's like, Ron, we looked at your proposal, and um, uh, I got to tell you that uh, she's in, um, she goes, I've been working for the park system for almost 30 years, and my first job was the ice races at Wilson Park. Mm. I'm like, wow, that's cool. And she goes, we're going to approve your proposal. And then she starts going around the table. She's like, you're going to fix the railing on the pavilion. Um, you're going to make sure the water's level, water level's up. And she points at another person. And she's like, you're going to groom uh, a trail through the park in case um, they want to do snowmobile rides for the kids or something. You know? And yeah. I realized she's in charge of the whole park system. Oh, that's cool. And uh, so I'm like, well, we need a place to put the show. It kind of outgrew Frank's. Humble Park is right there. They got a 5,000 seat amphitheater. They already let me do ice races. So I asked them, I go, can we do, can we do, you know, a, a, a cancer benefit bike show at the amphitheater and line the amphitheater with bikes? They're like, yeah, absolutely. That's cool. So, uh, so for two years we did it there. And then with the COVID shutdown, we had to like find another spot. Mm -hmm. And so we went urban. So high voltage went urban industrial this year. Yeah. <laughs> it was awesome. Um, well, that's really cool that the city's actually, uh, you know, not turning their nose up at it. You know, they're. Dude, they're, they're, uh, so like, uh, I'll give you an example. Um, uh, you know, I, I asked the park. So the park, like earlier when I talked about like, um, Milwaukee used to have a lot of beer gardens, you know, 100 years ago and more. And uh, now they have beer gardens in, in Milwaukee County Parks. Uh, they serve the beer. Milwaukee County Parks brings their trailer and they serve the beer at high voltage, yeah. you know, uh, at Humble Park. And I'm like, uh, how can you support that? You know, can we, um, you know, can we, uh, you know, get it like a dollar for every beer you sell or something they go we tell you we'll tell you what man we'll make pint glasses and they branded them with uh, the high voltage logo mm, that's cool. <laughs> so it's got the milwaukee county parks logo on the pint glasses and um you know some people are like hey man you can't have pint glasses you know if somebody drops one or whatever man they sold out instantly mm. It had Milwaukee County Parks logo and the High Voltage Show uh, logo and the High Voltage Ice Races logo on them. So that's the kind of that's the level of support. 
Mm -hmm. um, we get. And like I say, it's, uh, you know, if, if grassroots by saying that, you know, it's like everyone in the, in the community uh, coming together for something, yeah. that's what high voltage is about. It's yeah. like volunteers, um, Milwaukee County Parks, the city of Milwaukee, everybody doing a little bit. I got to say the Bayview Neighborhood Association mm -hmm. um, and Patty are uh, big supporters uh, and um, really help us out a lot. So yeah. um, all these neighborhood uh, associations, the city, yeah. the county. Uh, like I said, the, with this city being so ingrained with motorcycle like heritage, right? where it's almost like it's touched every family and every person somehow or another yep. growing up with it. I think that they met, might have a much different view of bikers. You know what I mean? Of the motorcycle oh, yeah. culture oh, versus, definitely. you know, like, um, oh, dude, I, I, I always tell this story, um, as an example of that, mm -hmm. uh, we, um, uh, like, you know, when I was younger, you know, we rode our shovel heads around, we drank a lot, you know, and me and my buddy, we run out of gas, mm -hmm. you know, and we're on the freeway, you know, right in Milwaukee, and uh, we're all messed up. We're like, we gotta get the hell out of here, we're gonna get busted. And all of a sudden we look, there's a sheriff uh, bike, stand, you know, pulls up and he's looking at us, you know, and we're trying to act sober. And uh, he's like, everything okay? Like, yep, just ran out of gas, just got to transfer some gas, we'll be on our way. And the dude at the time was on a shovel head, for a sheriff's department shovel head, and he just nods, he goes, hey, nice shovel heads, man, and just takes off. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's, it is, you yeah. know, people don't look at it, it's just like an everyday occurrence. Yeah. Somebody's on a bike, everybody's got a bike. Well, what I'm getting at is like a lot of like in Texas and I'm sure a lot of other areas like the biker population has much more of a stigma of like the clubs and the drama with that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And therefore, the public itself doesn't look at motorcycling in a lot of ways the same way I'm referring to the public here. Yep. So it makes it, I would imagine, kind of harder for like for me to go to the Dallas City Parks and Rec yeah. to be like, hey, we want to do an event here. They're like, what What do you do? Like, oh, we're well, bikers. Hey. And then they're going to be like, yeah, we don't. Did you see what happened in Waco two years ago? Like, yeah. fuck no, we're not letting you guys come out here and do that shit. Dude, here, the thing is, man, here, uh, you know, like in, in those areas you're talking about, it's kind of like, oh, those bikers. Here in Milwaukee, it's us. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not them. Mm -hmm. It's everyone. It's us. Yeah. So they don't they don't even think of that, you know, all those bikers. Yeah. It's like yeah. everybody's grandfather had one. Everybody's uncle had one. So many people got bikes in their garages and stuff around yeah. here that it's not a oh those bikers. It's like, <laughs> oh yeah, it's us. We're gonna go party, yeah. man. Yeah. That's how that's how it is. It's just a completely inclusive. And to, and to to me, I mean I've I've ridden around, you know, I've had I've ridden, actually, you know, I'll go back to the shovelhead because the shovelhead reunion is coming up, but I rode my shovelhead from coast to coast. I rode my shovelhead to Woodstock 94. Hell yeah. Um, you know, I ripped through the, you know, New York City on it. Uh, I've had it on the West Coast, um, every everywhere in between. And um, uh, I think it is a little different in Milwaukee. And yeah. I think what it is, is it's just, it's just us. Yeah. It's just part of it. It's not a, oh, those bikers are, are doing something. It's like, hey, we're going to go party. Yeah. You know, I think that's, that's, a, I that's, think that's, that's, that's the magic difference. of it, though. That's the magic of the city yeah. with, with the motorcycle culture is. Yeah. And is, Harley Davidson, you got to say, it was a huge part of that. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You know, um, everybody knows someone who worked at Harley Davidson over the years. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody's got a story about their Harley Davidson. It's probably the only place that people get checks from Harley, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Most of us write checks at, for Harley in yeah. the rest of the country. Oh, dude. Um, when when uh, we got our first uh, sponsor check from Harley Davidson, I framed it. Wow. That's uh, definitely a, uh, a um, what do they call them, oh like the God, cell phone. <laughs> yeah. 
take the picture that way instead of like yep. going to put the you know in. and look at the support like house of harley we're doing this podcast from from yeah. the house of harley davidson in milwaukee um i grew up here mm -hmm. you know this was this was my dealership this was all our friends you know came here to buy their bikes to get parts yeah uh i remember being here when i was a little kid <laughs> like looking up at the bikes yeah um so uh and like i said i you know i bought my shovel head here and everything and we were always coming here buying our bikes buying our parts and uh jeff the owner um uh still supports he's such a big supporter of milwaukee yeah and um everyone's efforts you know if anyone has a ride or a charity event going on he's like yes i'm in man yeah. and i don't know how many times uh you know i talked to jeff about hey man we're gonna you know uh you know we're gonna do the high voltage show we're gonna do these ice races we're gonna we're gonna do the shovelhead reunion and stuff and jeff would just look at me and go anything you need ron anything cool. just ask we're here for you man and uh you know it's just a motorcycle community that's how milwaukee is mm -hmm. um and you know i'm proud to say that's that's how high voltage is everyone mm -hmm. uh everyone pulling together uh even if they just come and volunteer um you know a lot of the uh, money well you know the money we make for the cancer research is uh we raffle items off you know yeah. so even um you know if you're a super small uh company people will just you know donate an item uh mm -hmm. donation uh for the raffle and stuff like that so that kind of support you know to me that's grassroots mm -hmm. where it just kind of grew up out of nothing and it's just the milwaukee motorcycle community and then in milwaukee you know the milwaukee motorcycle community is the community yeah exactly you know so like, do you feel do you feel like there's like younger guys too like maybe in the uh 20 to early 30s age that's kind of kind of taking up that role of being the uh curators of events or the ambassadors of events as far as like do things like what you have done yeah like i didn't i didn't get to meet the guys that that uh that put on mama tried but you know i met jeremy mm -hmm. obviously you um yeah. and, and a, well i'll tell you i do everything i can to support uh the younger people mm -hmm. and uh so like a, a friend of mine ian olson you know he's got a shop in his garage he's he's welding on a lot of hardtails mm -hmm. uh hardtail kits and stuff um, helping a lot of people um, I think he just recently turned 30 mm. uh, so I, I do everything I can uh, to help him out um, uh, with these younger guys uh, you know they're building custom bikes they need chrome mm -hmm. so we help them out with chrome help them out with fenders sometimes I don't even charge them because I know what it was like yeah. when you're young um, you don't have a lot of money and stuff so I do everything I can mm -hmm. uh, to, to help them. Um, like Jonah, uh, he had the sound system at High Voltage. He's in his 20s. Uh, Ace, is, I think, is in his 20s. Um, a lot of the guys that came uh, just to help, you know, move picnic tables around and yeah. set up the pop-ups and stuff, they're in their 20s. So um, we're, we're trying our best. And I know like a friend of mine, Cabana Dan, he helps them out as much as, as, much as possible. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we're we're trying um our best uh to return um what we learned from the yeah. old gray beards the old machinists yeah. the old uh the old timers to the young guys yeah so they, they can get a that. feel um for uh what it's like and and i hope you know someday uh that one of these young guys will uh, carry on, you know, the high voltage stuff. Something happens to me. I don't know. Every day is a gift, especially yeah. what I'm going through. Uh, so I'm trying to do as much as I possibly can to support the motorcycle community. Just have fun. Mm -hmm. um, like the drag races last night, man. Um, you know, we, we had like 150 bikes out there mm -hmm. drag racing and it was everything and a so lot of the it mile? was young people is it like is it like a traditional drag strip or is it like the, something no the uh the milwaukee mile speedway is the uh oldest racetrack uh continuously operating racetrack i guess in the world now mm -hmm. so um 
I believe um, it originally started as uh, like a horse track or something in the 1800s, and they've been racing there since at least 1903. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's a one-mile track, and uh, we race on the straightaway, so it's just for fun. So it's not a you know not a a quarter-mile track, Mm -hmm. but um, you know it's almost like 400 feet uh, down the straightaway. Uh, I think it's like 360 or something, and but it's fun. It's still mm-hmm. fun. So um, I gotta say, uh, last night, uh, uh, you know, walking around in the pit area, and every single motorcycle had a high voltage uh, sticker to identify their class. Mm-hmm. I did a high voltage sticker, and each one was a different color. Mm. So it was like really cool, because it's you know I'm. You know, one of the things I'm trying to raise awareness for cancer research um, and, uh, you know, return everything uh, and help help the motorcycle community and, you know, the community at large with cancer research. So it was pretty cool to walk around the pits and see these dozens and dozens and dozens of bikes from sport bikes, cruisers, supermoto guys came out. Um, vintage there are a couple knuckleheads out there wow. racing a um, uh, couple shovel heads electric bikes were out there we had an electric bike class so they won right and uh, <laughs> those things are fast well yeah you can't beat an electric motor mm-hmm. uh, I mean you know um, locomotives you know they're that's a diesel engine powering a big electric motor Mm-hmm. that hauls it because there's just so much torque yeah. and you're there's no there's no power band it's like from from zero to as fast as that thing will go that's your power band and torque yeah. goes just way up and it just stays there but um you know uh getting back to like the the young people and stuff it was it was a lot of young people there mm-hmm. and uh i i raced i, I gotta say my my friend rob shaw from two boss performance he's been around for a long time he put the stroker kit in my shovel head back in 1993 Damn. that's how long he's been a lot around and he's the performance guy you want a performance engine you go to him mm-hmm. and uh he was there and he worked a little magic on my engine and i was actually winning a lot last night I was like so cool. stoked and you're it's only like you know 360 feet but your adrenaline is high man yeah. and you're going fast by the end of that and um so he, he's like looking he looked at my plugs and stuff he worked his magic on it and the bike was fast people are coming up dude you were on fire tonight <laughs> and uh my friend uh jonah the guy that did, uh, brought his sound system the high voltage um He's got a stock 1200 Sportster, but his reflexes are so fast. He beats everyone. Yeah. You know, he, he just, um, it's like the top two guys that run nitrous and have the big motors. Those are the only guys that can't beat them, you know? Yeah. So I'm like, I'm like winning and winning and stuff. And then uh, I get one loss from my friend Chris Trapp. And I'm like, wow, I won a couple more times, you know? And then we're lining up again. And I look over and it's, it's Jonah. It's Spunback, and mm-hmm. I call him Spunback the Destroyer. And he's talking smack. He's just pointing his finger at me and going like, "Dude, you are going down, man!" Yeah. And then he eliminated me. You know, oh, <laughs> but it was it was fun. I did some cool trophies um, for everyone. Uh, so I did first, second, and third place yeah. uh, for the um, high voltage and MKE street drags, and. Um, <coughs> Uh, so it, it was a blast with a lot of young people. So, yeah. so we do the best we can to support the young people. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, well, it's probably good events. for them to see guys like you out there. Yeah, and older, you know, the older guys out there just fucking laughing and joking. And, oh my god, and talking shit so, too. You know, it was so much fun. <laughs> oh my god, and um, yeah, and they'll remember that. You know, they're in their twenties yeah. now, and they're you know, and I. They're always I gonna remember that. They're gonna be yeah. like, you know what, you, you know, as life starts to become more, maybe more responsibility, they're gonna remember. I want to be that guy. Yep. It's that age and fucking just yeah. out here living. You know, so I'll you know I'll often tell you know, and these these young guys will you know they'll tell you the stories too. You know, I'll often if they don't you know, they're young, they're just starting out, and uh, you know I'll, I'll I'll do something for them. 
you know make a custom part or yeah or do some chroming you know and i'm like first one's on me man they're like what and i go just you know when you get older and you're more established and everything you know just return it back to a young dude sometime yeah or, or a young girl in you know getting into bikes and stuff and they're That's like cool dude yeah yeah i'll do that man absolutely so they're going to remember the good times they're going to remember someone helping them out and hopefully when they get older more established they'll help they'll yeah. help that they'll help people out too that's cool man so we can start wrapping this up man i dude i sure this is fun yeah dude i, I really enjoy yeah. your enthusiasm for the city it's 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 contagious yeah like you know i said mean? i was born born and raised in milwaukee um and i've been you know over my decades i've been you know helping a lot of people out behind the scenes mm -hmm. and now with the high voltage show i mean even the lions lions international come out they sell food at uh high voltage mm -hmm. so you know you buy you, you know you buy a smoked pork sandwich or a bratwurst or something mm -hmm. uh half of the money they make half of their profit goes to uh the we care fund for cancer research nice. the other half they keep for their community uh efforts and stuff oh, that's good you know so um you know it's it's all about uh community community mm -hmm. support and really having fun so sure. i always say so you know i, I just got to thank everybody involved for all sure. the volunteers all the people that help sponsor all the people that donate stuff for the raffles um and i gotta say uh you know go to go to highvoltage414.com look at mm -hmm. the events there's the show there's the uh grand championship ice races yeah and um i gotta um you know thank all the people that support that uh real quick um when we did the first ice races at wilson park um our official referee was al sumner mm -hmm. uh al and judy sumner are like the uh, patriarch and matriarch in my opinion of the first family of motorcycle racing um that's cool in wisconsin including uh uh christine and uh bert sumner um they're great supporters uh our um our starter uh was jack uh canes great guy um he brought his daughter's uh charlotte's uh xr 750 uh mm -hmm. racer out to the high voltage show uh, nice. very honored yeah um so um there's a lot of support uh from everything so uh, from like every every i guess uh you know every like sub community and in, in every fast motorcycles yeah so you yeah. walked around there's like all these sport bikes with high voltage stickers on them um the dirt bike and ice racer people you know come out and support the uh um the high voltage ice races you know and again all the profit goes to um the we care fund uh we present big you know big checks. presentation yeah. checks to them and stuff um so come out, you know, come out and, uh, you know, go to highvoltage414.com, you know, come out sometime, check out the show, it's free. And the 414 is the original area code, right? Original area code, yeah. yeah I think Jeff here at House of Harley's flying a 414 flag on yeah. his flagpole. Um, so that's why it's it's 414, nice. you know. Um, my phone number is still, still the area yeah. code 414. So there's the, there's the show, it's free. Um, if you're a spectator at the ice races, it's free. Um, uh, come to the Shovelheads Run, uh, Poker Run. If you've never been on a traditional poker run, I don't just list out where we're stopping. You got to figure it out. Yeah, I have yeah. kind of like mysterious. Uh, you know, it's easy to get lost. It's like a so you got to kind of pay like potential. A, uh, what are those kind of races called? Are those uh, scavenger hunt kind yeah. of thing? Yeah. Yeah. So you gotta like uh, kind of look at clues and mm -hmm. stuff like that, um, and then uh, there's the um, there's the high voltage and MKE street drags. Yeah, once a month in the summer, um, you know check those out next year. Uh, it's a blast. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, race your friends. I mean, we had we had a group of supermoto friends. Like, where do we fit in? Yeah. I'm like, I tell you what, man, just register in the sport bike class. I'll do separate awards for you supermoto guys. Yeah. Just keep track amongst yourself in your group yeah. who's first, second, and third. Um, and then uh, the Shovelhead reunion, man. Mm -hmm. uh, 
We've got uh, the um, you know we'll have a pre-party at the Shovelhead reunion here at the House of Harley, um, the Harley Davidson. Well, you know the dates on that? Yeah, June twenty Saturday, June twenty sixth. Cool. And um, so the Friday before that, on the twenty fifth, is the pre-party here at the House of Harley. June twenty sixth is the big party at mm. the. Um, Harley Davidson Museum with the two bike shows, the field games, and then we're gonna go and have a big after party afterwards. That'd be awesome. So um, that sounds like a good time. Yeah, and uh, um, hopefully we'll have a shovel head uh, um, all restored, uh, ready, set to go, and we're gonna raffle that off for cancer research. That'd be awesome. All right. So uh, when you come down to the museum, that's another free event, the shovel head reunion. Man, bring your shovel head. Uh, there were, I looked up the numbers, Harley Davidson made more than twice as many shovel heads mm -hmm. as all knuckleheads and panheads combined. Mm -hmm. So that's like over 330,000 shovel heads. Yeah, I'm going to bring a bunch of M8s, but we're going to come support it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it'll be, it'll be a blast. Yeah. So we'll have a lot of awards. We have a lot of, a lot of support. Um, in my opinion, the greatest, uh, the best antique motorcycle meet is um, in uh, Davenport, Iowa, yes. and it's the Chief Black Hawk Motorcycle Club. Yeah, uh, It's their 50th anniversary next year. So they're going to come, and I, I believe that's 1971 Shovelheads. Um, they're a big supporter. They're going to come and give special uh, 50th anniversary Chief Black Hawk Motorci Antique Motorcycle Club awards to 1971 cool. Shovelheads. So the support is phenomenal and again um you know it's it's all about uh, cancer research awareness and uh supporting cancer mm -hmm. research but it's about having a good time it is you yeah. know it's it's really about just just come chill out have a good time and um you know help support the milwaukee motorcycle community yeah and, and i, I want to get more people that i know up here i want them to feel this uh this uh, camaraderie, this, this camaraderie, and this uh, mutual respect that the city has for the bikers. Yeah, you know what I mean. And it's, see if that uh, shit can't be, we can't spread that across the country more than anything. Yeah, it's it is incredible. And like I said, in Milwaukee, it's not you know those bikers. That it's us. It's, it's yeah. us. Yeah. Well, cool, Ron. Thank All you right. for doing this, man. Thank you. Thank you, man. Really, really inspiring. Cool. All right. Thanks. Yo, I can't thank Ron enough for making himself available to get this podcast recorded. It was under a lot of circumstances, like I was saying at the beginning of the podcast. I had to get on the road, catch a ferry, um, just a lot of things going on. So thank you, Ron, for uh, making the effort and helping me make this podcast possible. If you guys enjoy these shows and you want to help support it, you can do so by checking out our Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Fast Life Garage. Now, they have an app that you can get on your phone so that you can check out the uh, the unreleased podcast that we put out there, which we're getting to the point where we're, we're trying to come up with a couple ideas to do like a monthly or weekly show. It'll just be like an hour, hour and a half with, with certain people. And we'll just talk on that on that platform. So we'll we'll give you something else that, that nobody else gets. Right. And um, I'm just trying to, you know, generate income with this thing so that we can keep pushing it and taking it to next levels. And that's one of the best ways of doing it. The better way of doing it, maybe, if I could say that, is supporting our sponsors, DreamRise John on Instagram and TeamDreamRise.com. Paint Huffer Metal Flake on Instagram and PaintHuffer.com and FastLife25 saves you 10% off. ThunderMax EFI on Instagram and ShopTMax.com. And that FastLife offer code is going to save you 10% off which is going to go a long way at Thundermax. Lex and Moto on Instagram and Lex and Moto.com. Offer code FASTLIFE saves you 15% off. My guys at Simpson Motorcycle Helmets and Simpson Motorcycle Helmets.com. Electric Lighting Co. on Instagram and NAMS Custom Cycle Products.com. And offer code FL2020 saves you some shipping costs. Once again, guys, I really appreciate you checking all this stuff out. We're doing a lot of cool things. We're about to. Uh, I'm about to ride with all the homies to the down south camp out next week. Uh, really looking forward to doing this with Craig. Um, I kind of feel bad because I haven't done Steve's camp out yet, but like me and him talk all the time about. It's right before Sturgis. I can't make it. I got to go to Sturgis. It's my industry. It's my business. Love you, Steve. Let's let's figure out those dates. <laughs> he was giving me shit about it yesterday. 
But you guys, uh, we did announce the uh, Fast Life camp out dates. They are the uh, 6th through the 9th of, of May, 2021. And uh, we really hope that all you guys get to come and check that out and see where, um, you know, I got to meet guys like Steve Chamberlain and, and Craig and and all my friends that I've made across the country. You know, that, that camp out's been amazing for a lot of people and it's been amazing for myself. So uh, got a lot of cool things coming in 2021, but we're not there yet. So let's finish this shitty year, see who wins this election. And um, <laughs> let's just see if we're still alive in a couple of weeks. So anyway, we'll catch you back next week with Ron's, well, what, what is it? Rocks cycle service yeah we're finally getting across lake michigan and getting to some other podcasts we recorded in september by the way so here we go we'll see you next week peace